Welcome to use and care training for the SC500 battery-powered walk-behind auto scrubber. The SC500 provides extremely quiet operation, consistent cleaning, and unprecedented productivity and flexibility to customize performance to your specific application for low total cost of operation. The SC500 is available in two scrub deck configurations, traditional disc and rev orbital technology. For most machine details, there is no difference between the disc and rev versions. However, where there are differences in use and functionality between these configurations, the differences will be clearly highlighted in this training. This training will provide an introduction to the SC500 details, the daily use steps for the machine, and the routine maintenance and care steps for the machine. This course is not intended to be a substitute for the operator's manual that ships with the machine. It is important that you read, understand, and follow all safety and operating instructions in the manual. Doing so will ensure years of safe and optimum performance from your machine. completing this course, you should be able to identify the SC500 components and their functions, describe pre-operation inspection steps, describe how to fill the machine with water and detergent, list the steps necessary to start the scrubbing function, describe how to adjust the machine functions including speed, solution flow, brush pressure, vacuum power, and chemical concentration, explain the EcoFlex burst of power functionality and when to use it, describe battery charging process, and list routine routine maintenance steps. This training will begin with an introduction of the components and features of the machine. We will then cover the daily use and care steps which you will follow for a shift of cleaning including machine setup and cleanup of the machine after the shift of cleaning. We will conclude with a review of routine maintenance steps. Overview of components and features of the SC500. Looking at the machine from the side, the stylish SC500 design consists of a 12-gallon or 45-liter capacity solution tank, which includes two filling port locations, one at the front and one at the rear. A recovery tank with the same capacity as the solution tank, the large cover on top provides for easy cleanup of the recovery tank. A scrub deck system that will either be a disc system as shown here or a rev deck that looks quite similar but uses a unique orbital technology for scrubbing. Non-marking traction drive tires used to propel the machine during scrubbing and transport. Operator interface handlebar. Looking at the rear of the machine. Operator controls area with forward and reverse motion control paddles and key slot. This will be further defined just ahead. Onboard charger cord with its storage pocket. This storage pocket also includes a spot to store the squeegee. Pinch flow control recovery tank drain hose. Solution tank sight tube, which also serves as the solution tank drain hose. The battery disconnect. Water recovery system consists of a foot raised and lowered squeegee with a vacuum recovery hose that connects to the recovery tank from the squeegee. And the solution filter with shutoff valve on the side. Continuing with the inside of the machine, under the recovery tank lid you'll find the debris catch cage and the vacuum motor protection float ball system. And finally, looking inside the battery compartment, with the recovery tank tipped out you will find the batteries, the detergent tank for the EcoFlex onboard chemical dilution system, the vacuum motor for the water recovery system, and the onboard charger. Operator interface display screen and control buttons. The buttons and operator details screen are common between the SC500 disc and rev machines with the exception of one button that will be noted. Key slot, a key must be present here for the machine to function. Machine on off button, the SC500 also includes an auto turn off function that can be programmed to turn off the machine after a specified amount of time where the machine has been left idle. Scrub system on and off button, used to turn on the scrub system and increase scrubbing down pressure while cleaning. Multifunction display screen, which shows status of machine and extra information when control buttons are being pushed. Ecoflex burst of power button, vacuum system control button, solution flow control button, Ecoflex chemical control button. These two buttons, the rabbit and the turtle, increase and decrease the speed of the machine when the motion paddles are pressed. 
Pressing either button will change the multifunction display to show what the speed level is for the machine. Pictured here is the rev version of the button that will set the scrub parameters to be optimized for finish removal using an SPP pad. For disk machines, this button will look like this and will allow the brush to be removed without touching it when the deck is raised, a click-off feature. The final item and functionality to introduce on the SC500 is the key system which consists of two color-coded keys which provide functionality when inserted into the machine. The operator key is the gray key pictured at the right and the yellow key is called the super user key. Both keys ship with the machine and one of the keys must be placed in the operator dashboard as shown for the machine to operate. The yellow super user key can be used for normal cleaning operations like the gray key, but its main purpose is to set up and configure the many aspects of the SC500 machine like chemical dilution strength settings for Ecoflex system, travel speeds, down pressure settings, and many, many more aspects. This training will focus on the functionality that the gray operator key provides. For setup and configuration of the machine using the yellow super user key, refer to the operator manual and follow the screens on the machine and contact your dealer if you have questions. Preparing the machine for use. To assure successful trouble-free scrubbing performance, there are a few preparation and inspection steps that must be completed prior to a cleaning shift with the SC500. If the machine's storing steps were properly followed after the previous use, then you should find the machine like this. The battery charger cord plugged into the wall. The recovery tank cleaned out and left open to dry and tipped out exposing the batteries. The brush is clean and either connected to the machine already or close by and ready to use. The squeegee should be either connected to the machine or in its storage location hanging on the back of the machine. Unplug the battery charger and store the cord in its designated storage pocket on the back of the machine as indicated. If the SC500 is left on charge overnight, the machine should have a full charge and be ready for use. During charging, the recovery tank should be tipped out to prevent buildup of hydrogen gas from battery outgassing. Now the recovery tank can be lowered to its normal operating position. Inspect the pad or brush to assure they are fit for use. Pads and brushes should be relatively clean and free of any larger debris. Using a dirty or overworn pad or brush can damage the machine and or the floor you are trying to clean. Clean the pad or brush if necessary prior to use. Inspect the pads or brushes and determine if there is enough brush or pad life for the scrubbing you are about to complete. If not, replace the pads or brush as needed. Also, replace the pad if there are any tears or missing areas. For disc machines using a pad, replace the pad by squeezing and releasing the center locking system. Replace the pad and reinstall the center locking mechanism. For rev machines, the pad is held to the scrub deck with a Velcro-like system. Simply pull it off and replace as needed. Also make sure you have the correct pad or brush type for the scrubbing that you need to perform. An overly aggressive brush or pad can degrade the floor finish instead of just clean it. Pad and brush installation is different between the rev and disc versions of the SC500. For rev machines, they feature a 20-inch pad driver head with Velcro-like hook material on the bottom. To install a pad, simply slide it under the deck and lift it up and press it onto the hook material, making sure to line it up evenly. Do not remove the center section of the pad as is typically done with disc machines. To remove the rev pad, slide your hand between the pad and the scrub head face to break the Velcro-like bond. When using the rev machine to remove floor finish, install a new red or similar scrubbing pad and then place the maroon pad beneath that scrubbing pad. The maroon pad should never be attached directly to the rev driver face. This will damage the driver and it will have to be replaced. When using the maroon pads, there is also a thin optional double-sided Velcro sheet that can be used to attach the maroon pad to the bottom of the red or other scrubbing pad, making it easier since the maroon pad will stay attached to the scrubbing pad. Be sure to pre-wet the SPP pad before beginning floor finish removal for best results. There is also an optional Rev brush. To install the rev brush, align the marks on the edge of the brush with the notches on the edge of the rev driver as shown. On the face of the rev brush are plastic thumb screws that are tightened to hold the brush in place. 
pad driver, or brush installation for disk machines. You can install the brush by hand manually by lifting the brush into position and giving a slight rotation to lock it in place. Or you can automatically install the brush with the following steps. Center the brush directly below the scrub head as shown in the image. Turn on the machine and set the speed to minimum by hitting the turtle button until there is just one bar of speed set. Press the scrub system button which will lower the head onto the pad or brush. Momentarily activate the scrub system by pressing the motion pedal and the brush or pad will connect automatically. Recovery tank inspection. Lift the lid of the recovery tank to make sure that the recovery tank is empty. Check the ball float cage and make sure it is clean and that the ball moves freely. A clip on each side of the cage has to be opened to remove the ball float cage for cleaning. Inspect the debris catch cage and empty it if necessary. Squeegee inspection. Squeegees will wear over time and their water pickup efficiency will be reduced with wear. There are two rubber blades used with the squeegee. The rearmost blade is the one that is most critical to leaving a dry, clean floor. The front edge of the rear squeegee should be free of wear and rips and tears. If squeegee is torn or ripped, the squeegee should be rotated to put a fresh edge to the floor or be replaced. Each squeegee comes with four wear sides to help assure you have excellent water pickup. To flip or replace the squeegee, pull off the black strap that holds the rear squeegee in place. Make the squeegee changes and then reinstall the strap. Attach the squeegee to the machine with the two thumb nuts and tighten them hand tight. Do not over tighten the squeegee knobs as it is designed to safely break away if it hits an object during operation. The final inspection step is to give the machine a quick walk around and look for anything that looks worn, loose, damaged, or leaking, or out of place. Address issues found with the machine before using it for cleaning. Filling the machine. There are two fill ports on the machine, a rear port that allows filling with a hose and a front port that allows filling with a hose or bucket or from a sink faucet with the onboard fill hose shown in the image. Use one of the ports or methods to fill the machine with clean water. The solution level sight tube on the rear of the machine can let you know when you are close to full to prevent an overflow. Hot water cleans more effectively, but the water temper should not exceed 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 54 degrees Celsius. All SC500 machines come standard with the Ecoflex onboard chemical mixing system. Tip out the recovery tank and assure there is enough chemical in the Ecoflex chemical bottle to complete the scrubbing tasks. Any chemical concentrate specifically formulated for use in an auto scrubber will work properly with the SC500. To remove the tank, loosen the smaller gray cap and lift out the tank. Open the larger black cap and fill with chemical or to clean out the tank. Tip the recovery tank back in place after refilling the Ecoflex chemical bottle. We are now ready to transport the machine to the area to be cleaned. Turn on the machine by assuring the gray key is in place and then hit the on-off button on the control panel. Look at the battery icon on the display screen to assure there is enough battery power remaining to complete the planned scrubbing task. Machine motion and speed is controlled using the safety paddle system. Press forward on either paddle to move forward or pull back on either paddle to move in reverse. How fast the machine travels when the paddles are fully pressed is adjustable by the operator by hitting the rabbit button to increase speed or the turtle button to decrease speed. The machine has five speed settings. When you hit either the rabbit or the turtle button, the machine's speed will be shown while the speed adjustments are being made. To steer the machine, push the handle to the right or to the left to change the direction of the machine. To begin scrubbing, use your foot to lower the squeegee to the floor so you can recover the used solution. With the machine turned on, press the one-touch scrub activation button to lower the scrub head to the floor and to make the vacuum, solution, chemical, and brush motion ready to begin. All systems on the machine will become active when the motion pedals are pushed, and they will stop again when motion stops.
When scrubbing begins, this is what the multifunction display will look like. Let's go through this screen and look at the adjustments you can make while scrubbing to maximize machine performance and efficiency in a specific cleaning application. Note, using the yellow super user key will allow custom configuration of each of the scrubbing control functions to optimize machine performance and flexibility for a specific application. See Operator's Manual for more details about configuration using the yellow super user key. The leftmost section of the display will show what water flow setting is active. Hitting the Water Flow Adjustment button will toggle up the flow until there are four bars displayed. The next press will toggle water to off and then begin from bar 1 again. Flow settings 1 through 3 utilize speed-dependent flow control. This means that the amount of water put out by the machine automatically decreases when you slow down or increases when you move faster to help assure even cleaning and maximize scrubbing time per tank. Setting 4 is not speed-dependent flow control and is used only for when a lot of solution needs to be put down for some very high soil loads. This area of the screen controls the Ecoflex system chemical concentration. There are three settings here that are toggled through with the chemical control button. When either one or two bars are present, it will also show the current chemical dilution strength in the percentage and ratio of chemical to water. When no bars are shown, cleaning is being done with water from the solution tank and no chemical. To change the dilution strength settings configured in the machine, use the yellow super user key. This area of the screen will show a number that counts down when the Ecoflex burst of power button has been pushed, activating the burst of power feature. Burst of power is a great way for an operator to increase the cleaning parameters to more aggressively clean with the touch of a single button when a more dirty area or a spill is encountered. This feature will simultaneously increase the solution flow, chemical setting, brush pressure, and vacuum power one setting higher than what they were previously set at. Burst of power will remain active until the countdown hits zero. At that point, the SC500 will return to the cleaning parameters that were active prior to hitting the burst of power button. The battery image provides information on remaining battery power. The more bars present, the more battery charge that is left. The scrub brush icon, when present, represents the scrub deck is down and active. There are two down pressure settings available. If the scrub activation button is held down for a second, the higher scrub setting will be active and a second weight will appear above the scrub brush on the display, and the light next to the scrub activation will be lit. Pressing this button again for a second will return the unit to the lower scrub pressure level. Pushing this button momentarily while in either scrub pressure level will turn off the scrub system and raise the scrub deck. The final area of the screen shows what vacuum system setting the machine is in. There are three levels that can be toggled through by hitting the vacuum system button. Normal mode has the vacuum on. The quiet mode has the icon that is shown and runs the vacuum motor at a lower power for quieter operation. The final mode is vacuum off where the display will be blank in the vacuum indicator area. This is used for double scrubbing applications. Note, some functionality can be locked out using the yellow super user key, like flow level 4 and the higher scrub pressure level. If functionality of your machine is not as explained above, then the machine has specifically been configured to run in the way you are seeing it. Rev models of the SC500 provide the ability to remove floor finish using just water in combination with a surface preparation pad. For best finish removal results, the machine needs to be run with high down pressure, low solution flow without chemical, and slow transport speed. Hitting the Rev button will automatically set all of these scrub parameters in these conditions as shown in the image. When the Rev button is hit a second time, the scrub parameters will return to their previous settings. As a reminder, when using surface preparation pads with a REV machine, a buffer pad must be used between the SPP pad and the Velcro-like surface face. REV models of the SC5. To maximize your efficiency and safety, here are some good guidelines. Plan your route carefully to use as many long straight runs as possible to minimize turns and maximize productivity. Use a consistent overlap. 
enough overlap to not miss surfaces, but not too much to reduce productivity. When cleaning along walls or shelving, use the right side of the machine since the scrub deck is shifted to the right and provides a guide wheel on the scrub deck to make control along walls easy. Consider the area being cleaned and adjust the machine cleaning parameters to be as efficient as possible. Example, if the floors are reasonably clean already, then you should have all the scrub parameters set at low levels and only increase them if a heavier soil load is encountered where the burst of power button can come in very handy. Pay special attention at blind corners to avoid potential collisions. Finally, regularly examine the water recovery and cleaning performance of the machine. If you are not leaving floors clean, safe, and dry, make the necessary adjustments to the machine or squeegee. Eventually, the solution tank will get used up and the recovery tank will become full with the recovered water. The SC500 has a ball float valve that protects the vacuum motor from ingesting water. Once the ball float valve activates, the vacuum motor pitch will change to a higher pitch sound and water will no longer be picked up from the floor with the squeegee. Usually you will run out of water from the solution tank before the float ball engages. When the solution tank is empty or the recovery tank becomes full, transport the machine to a suitable location to empty it. Remove the recovery tank drain hose from its storage clip location and remove the cap from the hose. Bend the hose over to prevent flow, then release the hose at the drain opening. You can use your foot to control the flow if required. Reinstall the drain hose cap and put the hose back in its storage position after draining. If more scrubbing is to be completed, fill the machine again and go clean. After using the machine for a while, one of two things may happen. You will have completed your scrubbing task for the shift, or the battery will have become depleted to the point of requiring a recharge. Either way, the cleanup and storage process is the same. If it is the battery that runs low on power, the battery gauge will indicate that the battery needs to be charged by flashing without any battery level bars showing. At this point, scrubbing functions will cease and the scrub head will raise. The vacuum and propulsion system will remain active to allow you to recover the solution and transport back to the charging station. Storing the machine. Following the proper daily machine cleanup activities will assure proper performance from your machine over time and help avoid bad odors that can accompany a poorly maintained machine with a recovery tank that has been left dirty. Empty the recovery tank as previously discussed and thoroughly rinse it out to remove any and all debris from the tank. Remove and clean out the large debris catch cage and then put it back in place. Rinse off the ball float cage and make sure the ball moves freely to protect the vacuum motors. Remove and rinse off the squeegee and inspect it to make sure the blades are not worn, ripped, or torn. If they need to be changed or replaced, do so now. Hang the squeegee from the machine with the integrated squeegee hanger built into the charger cord storage location or from the recovery tank, or connect it to the machine now. Remove the brushes or pad or pad drivers and rinse them off and remove any large debris that may be present. Inspect the pads or brushes and see if the pad needs to be changed or flipped over and check to see if the brushes need to be replaced. If they do, do that now. Set them aside to dry. Charging. Tip the cleaned and empty recovery tank out to expose the batteries during charging to prevent buildup of explosive gases. When tipped out, the recovery tank lid will open a bit to allow it to air dry. Plug the onboard battery charger cord at the back of the machine into a wall outlet to begin charging. The machine needs to get a full charge overnight after each day's use, but it is also advisable to plug the machine in when not in use during the daily breaks since batteries will last longer when they are sitting in a charged state. It's also a good idea to take a wet rag and clean off the exterior of the machine to keep the machine looking at its best. Routine Maintenance Besides the maintenance steps that are done on a daily basis to prepare and clean up the SC500, there are also periodic maintenance tasks that should be completed. Weekly, one should, for machines that do not have maintenance-free batteries, you should check the water level of each battery cell and add distilled water as needed. Fill to above the plates and to just below the bottom of the fill tube. 
but not all the way to the top of the cell to allow for expansion while charging. Failure to keep the battery fluid level above the battery lead plates will decrease runtime and overall life of the batteries significantly. Caution. Batteries are filled with strong acid. Use care and protective equipment while inspecting and maintaining battery fluid levels. Clean the solution filter. The filter is located on the left side lower back of the machine. Turn the isolation valve for the filter to the closed position. Unscrew the filter cover, being careful to not lose the O-ring which is inside. Clean out the filter screen and then reassemble, being sure to open up the water valve again or no solution will come out during scrubbing. Purge the Ecoflex chemical system. To remove residual detergent from the detergent hoses and pump, activate the scrub system and assure the chemical system is also active with either one or two bars being present on the display for the detergent concentration. Then press both the solution and chemical control buttons for around 5 seconds to activate the Ecoflex purge mode which takes clean water from the solution tank and purges it through the Ecoflex detergent supply line. The purge mode will run for 30 seconds during which the word drain will be displayed on the display as shown. Squeegee pitch adjustment. When inspecting the squeegee, if the squeegee blades are not evenly worn, as an example, greater wear on the outer edges of the rear squeegee blade compared to the center of the blade, or vice versa, then the squeegee pitch should be adjusted. To adjust this, with the squeegee attached to the machine and lowered to the floor, adjust the squeegee adjustment knob to make sure that the squeegee is running evenly across the floor for better water pickup and more even squeegee wear. The following maintenance tasks should be performed annually. The carbon brushes in the vacuum motor and scrub deck should be inspected for wear and replaced if necessary. Refer to the operator's manual or an authorized advanced service center for carbon brush inspection and replacement help. For REV machines, inspect and replace as necessary the scrub deck brush vibration dampers. Consult an authorized service center for assistance with this task and any other service tasks. This concludes the instructional portion of this course. After successfully completing this course, you should now be able to identify the SC500 components and their functions, describe pre-operation inspection steps, describe how to fill the machine with water and detergent, list the steps necessary to start the scrubbing function, describe how to adjust the machine functions including speed, solution flow, brush pressure, vacuum power, and chemical concentration, explain the Ecoflex burst of power functionality and when to use it, describe battery charging process, and list routine maintenance steps. Next, we'll follow a quiz used to help confirm transfer of key knowledge from this module. A score of 80 or above is a passing score. If you are